Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my video lesson is on the angles that are formed when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal line. Our objectives today are that you will classify the angles formed by parallel lines in a transversal, and that you will find measures of angles formed by parallel lines and the transversal. Our question that I'd like you thinking about today as I go through the lesson, can you identify a pattern formed when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal? So here are some vocabulary words for you. Parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart and will never intersect. So here is an image. We have parallel lines and they will never intersect because every corresponding point is equidistant. Right, so think of parallel bars, they will never intersect. These arrows on the lines are an identifier. They tell you that the lines are parallel. So if you see this on a set of lines, that is telling you with symbols that they are parallel. A transversal, a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines and they're often parallel lines. So we're gonna learn about some special and unique things when they're parallel lines, but this is a transversal. Think of that train tracks and the arm that comes down to stop cars from going across when a train is going to pass. So the train tracks traverse, okay? They transverse across the street. So think of the lanes in your street as your parallel lines because they don't want to intersect or cars would crash, right? So roads are examples of parallel lines and train tracks transverse across. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. And so here are a set of, pair of perpendicular lines. And this symbol right here, that square, that little box, is the symbol that tells you that they are 90 degrees. When lines intersect, if one angle is 90 degrees, then all four angles are 90 degrees. Vertical angles, you should have learned this previous uh, year before you learn about parallel lines in a transversal. If not, here we go. Vertical angles are angles that are opposite each other and are formed by intersecting lines and vertical angles are congruent. So here's a set of intersecting lines. So any pair of intersecting lines, it doesn't matter what angles they form, Angles opposite each other are congruent. So these are vertical angles and whatever the one measure is, the other one is. They are congruent, same measure. Then these are opposite each other, vertical angles, opposite and have the same measure. They are congruent. Then we have supplementary angles. These are two angles whose measure have a sum of 180 degrees. So we always have a straight line that is formed when we have supplementary angles that we put together. So I have angle X and angle Y, and here they have this bisecting ray that is right here, and it's making two angles, right? So the ray is touching the line, forming a straight angle of 180 degrees. Together, X and Y are supplementary, and they have a sum of 180 degrees. Now let's talk about corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are formed when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal. Corresponding angles are congruent, meaning they have equal measures. So here are my parallel lines, and here is my transversal line. So let's talk about the corresponding angles in this diagram. So this angle corresponds to this angle. This angle corresponds to this angle. Noticing that these are both above their line and to the left of the transversal. These orange dots are to the right of the transversal, but still both above. So they're the same location, above, above, and left, above, above, and right. So the pink dots are congruent. The orange dot represents those two angles are congruent. These would not be congruent in this diagram because they're supplementary. Together, they would equal 180, but they are not the same measure. Now we have two more pairs, <clears throat> the blue to the blue. So below and to the left, below and to the left. Over here, purple to purple, 
below, so corresponding, they're both below their parallel line and to the right of the transversal. So each set of color angles are corresponding angles, corresponding locations. Now let's talk about interior and exterior angles. So again, I have my parallel lines cut by my transversal, and exterior angles are the angles formed outside of the parallel lines when intersected by transversal. So they don't have any special numerical relationship as far as their measure, but you need to understand the vocabulary word exterior. So these are the four exterior angles. They're on the outside of the parallel lines. So we call these exterior angles. Then we have our interior angles, which are formed on the inside of the parallel lines when intersected by this transversal. And here they are. So the green are interior, the pink are, are my exterior. Again, the pink angles don't have any common measure in common unless they were perpendicular, unless that transversal was cutting it perpendicularly. So, but they are, you need to understand exterior and interior. And here's why. Alternate interior angles are interior angles on alternate sides of the transversal, and they are congruent. So here we go. So inside, so interior angles and on alternate sides of that transversal. So this one's on the left, this one's on the right. So alternate interior angles are congruent. Then we have another pair, alternate and on the right, inside, interior, and alternate sides. So alternate sides, interior angles. Now we have alternate exterior angles. So alternate exterior angles are exterior angles on alternate sides of the transversal and they are congruent. So alternate sides and exterior, same measure, congruent. Alternate sides, exterior, congruent. All right, now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video and using this diagram, write down all the pairs of angles that are corresponding angles. Please pause and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So let's go over this. Again, we're talking about corresponding, so corresponding locations. So our first pair is angle one to angle five, above the parallel line and to the left. Our next is two and six above and to the right. Angle three and angle seven, they're both below that line and to the right of the transversal. And then our last pair is angle four and angle eight to the left of the transversal and below. So in their corresponding location, all right? So you could have listed these four pairs in any order, but these are the only four pairs of corresponding angles. Now, I'd like you to try another one. I would like you to use this diagram to name all the pairs of alternate exterior angles. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So here we go. Angle one and angle seven. So alternate sides of our transversal. So left of the transversal, right, and they're both exterior angles. So angle one and seven. And then we have one more pair. We have angles two and eight. They are both exterior angles and they are on alternate sides of the transversal. So the right side and the left side. Your turn again. I would like you to pause the video, identify the pairs of alternate interior angles that you can find, and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So here we go. Angle four and six, they are interior angles because they're on the inside of the parallel lines and they're on alternate sides. Angle four is on the left and angle six is on the right of the transversal. We have one more pair, angles three and five. They are both interior angles. They're on the inside of the parallel lines and they are on alternate sides of the transversal, on the right side of the transversal and on the left side of the transversal. And that makes them congruent. Your turn. I have a diagram here where I have parallel lines cut by a transversal, and I'm asking you to find the measure of angle one and angle two, given that this angle measure is 121 degrees. 
Please pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So here's our solution. So angle one is a corresponding angle to the given angle. So 121 degrees and angle one are both in corresponding locations. They are both above and to the left. So angle one has the same measure as the given angle, 121 degrees. Angle two makes a pair of supplementary angles with angle one. Angle one and angle two form a straight angle. So together they equal 180 degrees. So I know that angle two has to be 59 degrees because 121 plus 59 is 180. Another way that you could have done this is you could have found this angle and said 121 and this angle were supplementary and then this angle was a corresponding angle to this one. Many different ways you could have justified it or explained your answer. All right, I have a big one for you now. I would like you to pause the video and find the measure of each numbered angle. So there are seven angles here for you to find because I've given you this first one as 112 degrees. And make sure that you can justify or explain how you can verify the measure of the missing angles. So pause now and come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back. So I'm going to start with angle two. I know that angle two and the given angle of 112 degrees form a straight line so that they are supplementary and have to form 180 degrees together. So I know that 68 and 112 are 180. Therefore, angle two is 68 degrees. Then I'm going to go to angle four. Angle two and angle four are vertical angles and vertical angles have the same measure. They are congruent. You could have also said that 112, the given angle, and angle 4 form supplementary angles, which makes angle 4 68 degrees. Now, angle 6, angle 4, and angle 6 are alternate interior angles, making them congruent. So angle 6 is also 68 degrees. And then angle 8 is vertical to angle 6, making it congruent, so it's also 68 degrees. Again, once you found angle four, you could say that angle four and angle eight are congruent because they're corresponding angles. So we've learned a lot of vocabulary today and you just need to give one justification for each one. Moving on, angle three we know is 112 degrees because it is vertical to the given angle, making it congruent. Angle five and angle three are alternate interior angles and congruent, so it's 112 as well. And then our last angle, angle seven, is 112 degrees. What I could say, it is an alternate exterior angle to the given angle. So 112, the given angle, and angle seven are alternate exterior angles and congruent. All right, here's our pattern. That's what my question was for you at the start of the video lesson. And here we have it. So when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, eight angles are formed and each angle has a measure of one of two values. With the exception that if the transversal is perpendicular, then all eight of our angles will be 90 degrees, okay? But if it's not perpendicular, meaning there's no box given on any one of the angles, if one box is given, then all eight are 90 degrees. If there's no right angle box given, then we have to find them. And here's our pattern. These pink angles are all the same measure. So vertical, alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding, corresponding. Those are the reasons why those would be all equal. And then I'm gonna bring in my green to show that pattern. Vertical, alternate interior, vertical, alternate exterior. So the green, are all the same numerical value and the pink are all the same numerical value. So you can see this zigzagging pattern. So let's make the shoelace pattern. I always tell my students that it's easy to check your work because you can see if you don't see that shoelace pattern, that zigzag pattern, then you have done something wrong. So there you have it. Those are all the angles that are formed by parallel lines when cut by a transversal. I thank you for joining me today at the Magic of Math. 
where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.